Hi, I'm Claire and welcome to GenreWise, news from the world of SFF. I'm recording on January 20th and today we're going to start by looking at awards news, then we'll move on to books, fandom news, then film and TV news, and finally IRL news. For every item that I'm talking about, I'm going to be linking some extra information and more in-depth articles in the description box below, so you can always check there for further reading. First up in awards news, SFF legend Lois McMaster Bujold has been named the 36th Damon Knight Grandmaster for her contributions to the literature of science fiction and fantasy. Of course, Bujold is the author of the Vorkosigan saga, as well as the Chalian series, and the Sharing Knives series, and she is a multiple Hugo and Nebula Award winner, as well as an inspiration for many authors in the genre. She will be presented with her Grandmaster Award at the annual Nebula Conference in May. The judges of the 2020 Philip K. Dick Award for Distinguished Science Fiction published directly in paperback have announced this year's six final nominees. They include Sooner or Later Everything Falls Into the Seas, Stories by Sarah Pinsker, and The Rosewater Redemption by Tade Thompson. First prize and any special citations will be announced on April 10th, 2020 at Norwiscon 43 in Seattle, Washington. And finally, Hugo nominations for the 2020 awards are now open, so if you you're eligible to nominate, you should already have received an email about it. If you're not sure what's eligible or in what category something should go, you can check the description below for the excellent spreadsheet that is maintained by Renee of multiple Hugo Award winning fanzine Lady Business. And if you're nominating, remember that booktubers like myself and many others who cover science fiction, fantasy and fandom are eligible to be nominated in the best fancast category. Fancast is for audio and video content, so please Keep us booktube SFF folks in mind when you're preparing your nominations. Moving on to books, we have a release date for book four of the Stormlight Archive. The next volume in Brandon Sanderson's epic fantasy saga comes out on November 17th, 2020 from Tor Books, although we don't have a title or a cover for it yet. The next installment in Jim Butcher's best-selling Dress and File series has a release date. Peace Talks is the 16th book in the series and the first new Dress and Files novel since 2014. It will be out on July 14th from Ace Books in the US and from Orbit Books in the UK. Next up we are getting a graphic novel adaptation of the long-running wildly popular children's book series Animorphs. The original series written by K.A. Applegate and Michael Grant came out in the 90s and was all about a group of teens that morphed into animals to fight off aliens. This new graphic novel comes out October 6, 2020 from Scholastic Graphics and it will be written, illustrated, coloured and lettered by Chris Grine, an Eisner Award nominated cartoonist. Subterranean Press have just announced the first print edition of Unexpected Stories by Octavia E. Butler, one of the most significant figures in modern science fiction. This volume presents two recently discovered stories that have never been in print before, as well as a new introduction by Nisi Shaw. As usual with Subterranean Press, this is a beautifully crafted short-run edition at a premium price, and it should sell out pretty quickly. Link to the pre-order in the description box below if that sounds like your kind of thing. Next, we've got a whole lot of new books that have just been announced, so I'm going to talk about each one fairly quickly, and you can let me know in the comments which ones you want to know more about, which ones sound more interesting to you. Podcaster, journalist and author Bridget Chipir has a new middle grade tie-in book for Marvel coming out on August 4th, 2020. It is called Marvel Avengers Assembly Orientation. It's got illustrations by James Lancet and will feature Miles Morales, aka Spider-Man, Kamala Khan, Miss Marvel and Doreen Green, aka Squirrel Girl. Orbit Books have acquired an epic space opera by debut author Essa Hansen. The intriguingly titled No Feck Gloss is the first book in a trilogy and we're told it's for fans of Revenger and Children of Time. It focuses on Caden, a young man who sets out on a single-minded quest for revenge across the galaxy after his home planet was destroyed. It comes out this autumn. Also out this autumn from Orbit Books, we've got Bone Shard Daughter, the first book in a new fantasy trilogy and the debut novel from Chinese-American writer Andrea Stewart. The story is set in an empire of many islands where Bone Shard magic fuels monstrous 
constructs that enforce law and order. We've got whispers of revolution and a protagonist who must master this art of bone shard magic, all of which sounds pretty epic to me. Next up is The Seventh Perfection by Daniel Polanski, a structurally innovative puzzle box novella that uses a series of character interviews to produce a unique mix of fantasy and mystery. We follow Manet, who must master all seven perfections in order to ascend and become the god king Amenuensis, and this is out from Tor.com Publishing this autumn. And also from Tor.com Publishing this autumn, we have the Fourth Island, a new novella from poet and novelist Sarah Tolmy. The story kicks off when a body washes up on the shores of a village in the Aran Islands and no one recognizes a drowned man, nor can anyone in any of the nearby villages identify his body. The thing that really got me in the synopsis was the phrase, as the mystery sinks into the soil, it begins to change the island. I want to know what that's about. And we've got yet more Autumn 2020 releases with two new novels out from Angry Robot Books and they were both chosen from an open submission period that Angry Robot held earlier this year, so that's pretty exciting. On September 8th there is The Phlebotomist by Chris Panettiere, a near-future sci-fi novel set in a dystopian society that is segregated by blood type with a mandatory blood draw and we follow a government phlebotomist who works as a reaper for the draw. On October 13th we've got The Rush's Edge by Ginger Smith, a sci-fi novel about a small crew of misfits who work on the edge of the galaxy salvaging crashed ships until they find a mysterious sphere that downloads an alien presence into their ship. Hugo Award winning writer Alex E. Harrow, whose debut novel The Ten Thousand Doors of January came out last year, has two new novellas due out from Tor.com Publishing. Both of the books will follow the dimension hopping adventures of Zinnia Grey, a real life sleeping beauty who pricks her finger on a spindle's end and then finds herself flung through the multiverse into a fairy tale version of her own story. We haven't got any titles so far, but the first novella is scheduled to be published in spring 2021. One. Orbit Books will be publishing a new epic fantasy trilogy by Suyi Davis Okomboa, the author of David Mogo, God Hunter. The series is called The Nameless Republic, it's inspired by West African empires and will follow a clever but disillusioned scholar who meets a skin-changing warrior. You can expect music, a quest, unreal creatures. The first book should be out in summer 2021. And finally, a couple of cover reveals. We've got a cover for Over the Woodward Wall which is a new book by Shauna Maguire, writing as a Deborah Baker. This is the full version of a book that appeared in Maguire's 2019 novel Middle Game and is described as a young at heart tale of talking trees and sarcastic owls, of dangerous mermaids and captivating queens. The art and design for this absolutely gorgeous cover are both by David Curtis and the book comes out in October 2020 from Tor.com Publishing. We've also got a cover for Laura Lamb's new book Goldilocks and look how beautiful it is. That was designed by Yeti Lambrecht. Described as a bold and thought-provoking new sci-fi thriller, Goldilocks is about five women astronauts who must hijack a spaceship to journey away from a ravaged near future Earth and towards a new home and a brighter future for humanity in the Goldilocks zone. It comes out on April 30th from Headline Publishing in the UK and just a few days later on May 5th from Orbit Books in the US. Next up we've got Phantom News, starting with a change of venue for FantasyCon 2020, which was originally going to be held in Sheffield and has now moved to London, specifically Holloway. Now I'm pretty happy about this because it's in my neck of the woods in North London now, so if you are going I should absolutely be seeing you there and it's happening September 25th to the 27th. Sci-Fi Wire has acquired rights to Looking for Leia, a seven episode short form docuseries from independent filmmaker Annalise Ophelian that looks at various aspects of Star Wars fandom, from cosplayers, artists and makers to authors who were inspired by the franchise and of course the legacy of the late great Carrie Fisher. The series focuses on how Star Wars fandom has changed the lives of women and non-binary fans in particular, challenging the typical narrative of Star Wars fandom as over 
overwhelmingly male. All seven episodes will be available on sci-fi.com and this article I've listed below also says it's available on YouTube but I'm assuming that must be region locked because I wasn't able to get it to logged when I tried from the UK. And finally, voting has now opened in the Down Under Fan Fund, Duff, and the Gone Under Fan Fund, Guff. These funds help fans travel to conventions across the globe that they otherwise wouldn't be able to afford attending. Duff is between the US and Australasia, and Guff is between Europe and Australasia. And myself and Elizabeth from Books and Pieces are standing jointly for this year's Guff race. It is going to be a very, very competitive vote because there are some excellent candidates also standing. So if you've been active in SFF Venom since before 2018 and you can afford to donate a little to the funds, then you can vote to send some fine folks as a representative from US and European fandoms to this year's Worldcon in Wellington, New Zealand. If you'd like to vote for me and Elizabeth, that'd be aces, but even if you don't rank us first on your ballot, you'd be supporting a cool fanish initiative and helping the fund grow for another year. Links are in the description box below and feel free to ask any questions in the comments below if anything is confusing at all because it's a process. Next we've got film and TV, starting with good news for Trekkies. The highly anticipated Star Trek Picard has been renewed for a second season before its first season has even premiered, and that second season should be 10 episodes. There are also rumours that a third season was ordered to allow for back-to-back -back filming, however those rumours haven't been confirmed by the network at this time. Season 1 premieres in just a few days, January 23rd, on CBS All Access. Scott Derrickson, who previously directed Doctor Strange, has stepped down as director for the upcoming sequel, Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness. Derrickson and Marvel say they parted ways amicably due to creative differences, and Derrickson remains an executive producer on the movie. There's no word yet on a new director, but the movie is still set to release on May 7th, 2021. Award-winning actor Gael Garcia Bernal joins the cast of the Station Eleven adaptation in a recurring role. This will be a 10 episode limited series that's based on the best-selling novel by Emily St. John Mandel. Of course it tells the story of a traveling acting troupe that puts on Shakespeare and the post-apocalypse and Bernal will play Arthur, a famous actor from a small island off the coast of Mexico. Next up we've got a few exciting adaptation announcements, starting with AMC Studios, who have acquired TV rights to Jeff Benamia's Bourne novels that all take place within one single mysterious mind-bending universe. Benamia will serve as an executive producer and creative consultant on the project, but we don't know much of a timeline for it yet. Next it looks like we're getting a Binti adaptation, so we'll get to follow math prodigy Binti as she runs away from home to be the first of her people People to attend Umza University, the finest institution of higher learning in the galaxy. There is not much info on this project yet, except that Nadia Okorafor, who of course wrote the original award-winning Binti novellas, will be co-writing the script for the show alongside Stacey Osei-Kufor, who's previously written for Watchmen. I am very, very excited to see the final product there. Author Michael Shabon will be adapting his Pulitzer Prize-winning novel, The Amazing Adventures of Cavalier and Clay for a limited series on Showtime. Shabon will be working alongside his wife and fellow author Ayelet Waldman and they will both write and executive produce the series. Shabon, who is currently showrunning Star Trek Picard, will also take on the role of showrunner on Cavalier and Clay, which should debut next year. HBO Max has ordered a TV adaptation of Neil Stevenson's Snow Crash to be available exclusively through its streaming service. It is very early days yet, so no word on casting or timelines, but it sounds like it could be very cool indeed. The brand new Snowpiercer adaptation with David Diggs and Jennifer Connelly will be premiering on May 31st on TNT in the US, and it's got a brand new teaser trailer. This will adapt not only the original French graphic novel by Jacques Lobb, but also the 2013 movie by Bong Joon-ho starring Chris Evans, which had a very, very limited release, but is supposed to be really quite good. Snowpiercer is a post-apocalyptic story in which all the remnants of humanity live on a single, very long and very class-segregated train that is forever making its way through the snow that now covers the entire world. 
We've also got a trailer for the upcoming Lock and Key Netflix show based on a graphic novel written by Joe Hill and illustrated by Gabriel Rodriguez. If you're into trippy psychological horror, creepy houses and just all around weirdness, do check it out. There is a link in the description below to this trailer and Snowpiercers and Lock and Key Season 1 drops on Netflix on February 7th. Now some great news that just dropped as I was about to start recording today. All 21 Studio Ghibli movies will be available to stream on Netflix in the UK and Ireland and it looks like in most of the rest of the world too, except for the US and Canada. As I mentioned in a previous episode of Genre Wise, HBO Max owns the North American streaming rights for all of Studio Ghibli's films, so that is where US and Canadian viewers can stream those. But for all the other Netflixes around the world, the films will be added in three batches between February and April, starting February 1st. And finally, we've got some brand new pictures from BBC America's The Watch TV show which looks not good at all to me. There were already some concerns when they unveiled cast pictures late last year, showing a young, thin and conventionally attractive actor was chosen to play Lady Sybil Ramkin. And also Lady Sybil is a vigilante in that one, which like, why? I'm still not over that. That makes no sense. Anyway, I did some research on the show because I was frankly confused as to how, who and why. So I found that official press documents call this show inspired by the Discworld novels and not actually based on them. And I can see now why they made that distinction. It's because they wanted to make it into a weird, gritty, cyberpunky amp more pork with electricity. I mean, imagine looking at Discworld and thinking, yeah, this definitely needs a complete overhaul. And I should clarify also that the estate of the late great Terry Pratchett, and in particular Sir Terry's daughter, Rihanna Pratchett, who is herself a writer, have not been involved in this adaptation pretty much since they sold the rights to BBC America. So that might go some way to explain how this series got so, so far away from the Discworld that we know and love. Anyways, that's not really any more news about it. It's just the pictures, but I'm baffled and I'm sad and I thought we could all complain about it in the comments. And finally, in real life news, I wanted to talk about what happened over the holidays with the RWA, the Romance Writers of America. This is a very, very complex situation that is still unfurling, but the gist of things is that the RWA, a huge professional organization for romance writers, has basically been completely imploding over the course of a few days. This started out when a number of people were dismayed that a romance editor kept liking racist tweets and following racist people. And then things got cranked up to 11 when the RWA singled out Chinese American author Courtney Milan, who was one of the many people making these complaints on Twitter. But then she was the only person that the RWA decided to ban because saying, oh, this book was racist, apparently violated the organization's policies. And mind you, this was just a few months after they had given Milan a service award for helping improve diversity within the organization. So after that, a lot of absolutely bogus things happened. And honestly, I don't understand the ins and outs of the situation well enough to be the one to explain it. I'm just utterly unqualified. I hope I didn't botch this introductory bit too badly, but I did ask some of my friends who are more into the romance side of Phantom to recommend me some good comprehensive articles about this to share with you in case you're interested. So I wanted to point you towards this Jezebel piece by Kelly Faircloth called Inside the Spectacular Implosion at the Romance Writers of America, as well as a Dreamwits post from Asia Romano called The RWA, The Shitstorm Explained, in which they write up the RWA situation in the style of a Phantom Wank article. So if you're one of these older fans who misses Phantom Wank, you can go and check that out. So that's it. This was Genre Wise. I hope you enjoyed it. And please let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Which of those upcoming books are you most excited about? Are you voting in this year's Hugo's? What do you think of those super cringe set pictures from The Watch? The those are important questions though, and I want to know your answers. If you like the show, please share it around. I work really hard on it, and I'd love for as many people as possible to see it. Thanks for watching, and I hope you'll join me again in a month's time for more science fiction, fantasy, and fandom news. If you'd like to see more from me, you can check out a previous video on screen right now. And if you haven't yet, please hit the subscribe button that's on my face for a new video from me every week. I've been Claire, thanks so much for watching, and see you soon.